Welcome to another episode of Get Thready With Me. Today I'm going to show you all how to make a high neck sleeveless crop top. This style of shirt is a really nice, basic, yet flattering piece to own. And they go with pretty much anything. So let's go! Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is to make the pattern. And to do this, I pick out a t-shirt that fits me pretty well. It is fairly tight fitting and is made out of stretchy fabric. You can pretty much use any tight fitting t-shirt. But the most important thing is that the t-shirt needs to have a high back of the neck. So to make the pattern, I first turn this t-shirt inside out. It needs to lie with the back of the shirt, which is usually where the tag is, facing up. First I make a mark 2 inches away from the neckline, on both sides, on the top of this seam. Then I make a mark directly underneath each armhole seam. Then I need to work out what width the bust measurement needs to be. So I took my bust measurement. Then I took 2 inches off this measurement and then I divided this by 2. This gives me 17 inches. So I make two marks at the same height as the armholes, just bringing them in, so that this is 17 inches across. Now I'm going to join up these two marks with a curve. Now you can either use one of these French curve rulers if you have one, or you can just eyeball it. With the curve, you kind of want to follow the shape of the curve on the armhole of the t-shirt that's already there, but bringing the curve in at the top here so that it meets up with your other mark. The next step is to decide how long you want the shirt to be. I wanted my top to be around 17 and a half inches long. I took off an inch to allow for the turtleneck, but then I added it back on for the hem allowance at the bottom of the shirt. So I made a mark 17 and a half inches below the center of the t-shirt's neckline. The bottom of the crop top is going to sit pretty much at your waistline. So I took my waist measurement and then again, I minus two inches and then I divided this measurement by two. So for me, I got 14 inches. So I'm going to make this bottom line 14 inches long by connecting up these three marks in a straight line. And then lastly, I need to connect up these two lines. And this is what my basic top pattern is going to look like. Now I just need to transfer this pattern onto some paper. I fold the shirt exactly in half and I put a piece of paper inside, matching up the edges of the paper with the fold. Then using some pins, I press through the shirt, following the chalk lines all the way around. This creates small holes on the paper below. Then all I need to do is simply connect these small holes together, just like a join the dot picture. And I cut this out. See, they're the same size, woohoo! Okay, so this is the only pattern piece that I'm going to need, and it's going to be used for both the front and the back of the shirt. Now that's done, onto the fabrics. The fabric that I'm making my shirt out of is a very stretchy, two-way stretch rib jersey. But you can pretty much use any stretchy jersey fabric. To copy my pattern onto the fabric, I first fold the fabric in half, and then I place the pattern piece on top, with this edge on the fold. Now because I don't trust myself to cut it out accurately while it's just on top like that, I pin it on, trace around it, then remove the pattern piece, put the pins in to hold the two layers in place, and then I cut around the traced lines. And when I unfold it, I have this. Now I simply need to do this once more so that I'll have two pieces. Now that I have two identical pieces, I sandwich them together. And then I sew the two pieces together at the sides and at the shoulders. And it's also a good idea to pin, pin, pin when you're working with stretchy fabric. To sew the front and back pieces together, I'm using a zigzag stitch. Some extra tips to make your life easier is to also use a thread that's very similar to the colour of your fabric and to use a ballpoint jersey needle instead of a regular sewing machine needle. Once these two pieces are sewn together, I turn the top inside out so that the seams are on the inside. And it's a good idea to try it on at this stage, to make sure that it fits alright and that you can get your head through the neck hole, etc. Now I'm going to make the cuff for the neck. I measure the circumference of the neck hole, which is 10 inches. I then take half an inch off that measurement. And so I cut out a strip which is only 9.5 inches long. It's also 3 inches wide, but if you want more of a turtleneck, you can increase this. Or if you want less of a turtleneck, then decrease this and make the strip thinner. Anyway, after cutting this rectangle out, I fold it in half like this, and then I sew down here, with a half inch seam allowance. Then I turn the piece inside out so that the seam is on the inside, and then I fold it in half lengthways like this, to give myself this kind of cuff thing.
Then I place four pins equally around the neck hole. So one pin on each shoulder seam and one in the centre front and one in the centre back. I do the same thing on the neck cuff with four evenly spaced pins. I'm going to match these pins up when I sew the two pieces together. To sew the cuff on, I'm first removing this doobly-doo from my machine so that the cuff will fit over the top. Then I slide the neck cuff on with the raw edges facing this way and the neckline of the shirt goes underneath it. So the cuff is going to be sewn onto the right side of the shirt. Once I match up the raw edges, I sew the neck cuff onto the shirt. I do this by using a zigzag stitch and at the same time stretching the fabric underneath so that each set of pins basically match up. When I get to the next set of pins, I remove them and then I do the same thing. I stitch along the edge, stretching the fabric so that the next set of pins line up. And I do this all around the neck hole until I reach the point where I started from. And that's the neckline done. For the armholes, I'm basically going to do the exact same thing. However, the strips are going to be a little bit thinner. I measure the armhole circumference, which for me is 15 inches. And then this time I subtract one whole inch from this measurement. So I cut out a strip that's 14 inches long and 1.5 inches wide. Then I do the exact same thing that I did for the neck. I fold this strip in half, so here, turn it around, fold it in half lengthways to get a cuff, quarter it with pins, quarter the armhole evenly with pins, and I sew them together, raw edges matching, with the cuff on the right side of the shirt. And again, I stretch the fabric while I sew so that each set of pins matches up with each other. Now the last thing that I need to do is to hem the bottom of the shirt. So I turn the shirt inside out and then I fold the bottom up about one inch. And then I sew across it. Now I recently got myself this special sewing foot called a walking foot. This thing makes sewing with stretchy fabrics a dream. Basically it helps feed all the fabric through evenly to stop the hem from ruffling when you sew it. If you don't own a walking foot however, I recommend sewing the hem using a piece of paper underneath, just like I did in this video here. Here's a close up of the walking foot in action. And look at my nice flat hem. So I finished the top, but then I tried it on and I decided that the armholes were slightly too tight. So I actually wanted to try and make the top again, but modified the pattern slightly to make the armholes larger. So back to my pattern, all I simply did was to make the armhole a little bit larger by extending this curve. And I tried again, this time using the same fabric but in black. And I'm not going to film the whole thing again because all the steps I used are exactly the same as before. So that's it. Hello? So yeah, that's it. That was actually surprisingly easy to do. The second top that I made, so this one, actually only took me about an hour to make and that was because I wasn't filming, I was sewing at my normal sewing speed. So yeah, you can pretty much whip up a bunch of these in all different colors in no time. And while it's a really nice basic shirt to own that'll go with a lot of things, you can also do some more interesting things with it with say t-shirt transfers or fabric paints or embroidery or using different fabrics for the cuffs and the collar to make some really interesting tops. And I'll see you all for my next video. Bye. Baseline.